Welcome to the Fast Leader Podcast, where we uncover the leadership life hacks that help you to experience breakout performance faster and rocket to success. And now, here's your host, customer and employee engagement expert and certified emotional intelligent practitioner, Jim Rimbach. Call Center Coach develops and unites the next generation of call center leaders. Through our e-learning and community, individuals gain knowledge and skills in the six core competencies that is the blueprint that develops high-performing call center leaders. Successful supervisors do not just happen. So go to callcentercoach.com to learn more about enrollment and download your copy of the Supervisor Success Path eBook now. Okay, Fast Leader Legion, today I'm excited because we're going to have somebody on the show today who is going to help us to really focus on the things that are important. Uh, and and really, you know, try to overcome, be more resilient, you know, and, and make a better future for ourselves. Nathaniel Zubrig was born and raised in a small town called Adelboden in the beautiful Swiss Alps. However, most of his childhood and part of his teenage years, he spent mostly in the university hospital in the capital city of Switzerland, which is called Bern. Nathaniel has three brothers. Two of them are married with kids, and his third brother is in a relationship. His parents are the most supportive parents he could have wished for because the hard journey that he went through as a child and teenager um, was really a situation where his parents made a significant difference for him. His parents are still married after being together for over 40 years. Nathaniel has developed early on an attitude of gratitude, positivity, and never give up. He admires freedom to travel, which probably comes from being continuously bound to treatments or hospitals. Growing up, Nathaniel has always been a fighter throughout his life. Never giving up is his mantra. His dad came from a hardworking family, and that mostly influenced him. Nathaniel started working as a building painter, and he absolved a, an apprenticeship for three to four years due to missing many days because of having to do his life-saving treatments three times a week. He did the apprentice in four years instead of three. After he worked full-time as a painter, Nathaniel also worked as a kid's ski instructor, instructor during the wintertime for three years before moving to Australia for four and a half years, enrolling in a leadership college. After finishing the leadership college, he discovered that his story is very inspirational and very life-changing for many. So in January of 2016, he began a career as a global inspirational speaker and victorious mindset mentor. Now he helps and inspires people to develop a victorious mindset regardless of their situation. His mission, his mission is to challenge the average life of what people are living across the world. Nathaniel's legacy is to be an inspiration that nothing is impossible to achieve even though you may be burdened with lots of limitations. Never, ever give up life. One of his most important missions is to build 10 hospitals in slums that help people not to just get physical help, but also emotional and spiritual support. He is committed to breaking the pattern of poverty, low self-esteem, and low dignity. Nathaniel currently lives in a small town on the lake of Zurich, about 30 minutes from Zurich. Nathaniel Zubrick, are you ready to help us get over the hump? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, amazing. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm so excited to be here. And uh, wow, what a great show to be on and add value to all of your listeners. Well, I'm glad you're here. Now, and, and for me, having you on the show, people may think, well, Fast Leader Show, we're talking about customer-centric leadership. We're talking about, you know, how to, you know, engage internally and engage externally. And, and for me, when you start thinking about hardships, when you start thinking about changes in the world, um, you know, we need a message like yours in order for us to really focus, you know, on the things that are purpose-driven, you know, mission-based, uh, difference-making. And that's why I wanted to have you on the show. But if you could, please share with the Legion a little bit about your passion. Yeah, sure. So as we um, listened already to the to the passion in, in the previous sentence or the paragraph, I really have the passion to inspire people to live an inspirational life, um, that a life that lives it above average. And I love that the reality is that no matter the circumstances, the struggles, the limitations that we might have, and, and we all have them at some point of life, that we have an unlimited potential within us that can um, create such great values for, for this world. And uh, 
in my case, um, even the pain, like so far, most of the pain has turned into the purpose. And uh, I'm a big believer in uh, living a life that says hey, everything will work out together for the good. And uh, that's why I'm so passionate about to help people. So you, you get in, you talk about this mis- victorious mindset. What is the victorious mindset? I think firstly, it's it all about not focusing on what's happening right now, but looking into the future and what could be, um, what could be possible. And so many times we, we naturally are drawn to react emotionally or physically or spiritually into a habit of what's happening right now. But what I realized that we always have the opportunity to switch the mindset to a victorious mindset that says, okay, I might have the problem right now, but I'm going to take that problem and turn it into an an opportunity. And that's for me, the beauty of having the mind, the powerful tool in our life that we can change um, almost anything that is in front of us that might look hopeless, that might look difficult or complicated and turn it into something beautiful. Okay. So I mean, when you say it, it's like, oh yeah, no problem. We can do that. Uh, however, you know, all of us, when we start thinking about our own natural wiring, you know, hey, I have the DNA and I was born this way, right? Um, and then we think about, you know, the different starting points. It's kind of like, for me, the analogy that I can connect with in my mind is like, just talk about an, an Olympic, Olympic athlete, you know, and you, and you look at a child and say, can all children be Olympic athletes? And for me, I don't believe they can. I mean, I think you have some God-given, you know, elements, you know, that could possibly give you the opportunity to become one, you know, but then it's self-realization, it's focus, commitment, mind, the mind, you know, the mindset, you know, it, there's several different components that go into it. So while we can sit here and say, it's, hey, man, this is easy, all right, you know, you, you're having a hard time, don't focus on today and what you're going through, let's focus on tomorrow. Not everybody can easily do that and then also sustain it, right? Um, and I think that's part of the human condition and the struggle. So if we start talking about me, I say I have the DNA, I made this way, and I focus in on today too much. I focus in on the negative and the threats too much. How can I begin to reprogram myself so that I can get to the point where I have the victorious mindset? Great, great question. I think that the beauty of it, firstly said, is um, it doesn't matter how we are born or, or what we are born with. I think the beauty is that we can even change that. And of course, we have the DNA, we are wired in certain things, uh, in certain ways. Um, back to your question, is like, I think it's a constant lifelong learning. And for me, I remember it didn't, it didn't start with one year old or it didn't start with 11 years old. It didn't start with 15 years old. It somewhere started along the way to realizing, ah, oh, okay, those events that are coming at me, um, where there was a lost kidney transplant three times or 40 operations uh, over their lifetime, um, I realized that each time I can take a step either into the positive side of the event or the, the negative side of the event. So let me give you a short example. I was 11 years old when I had um, lost my third kidney transplant. And so the moment I realized, okay, my, my, my being is really drawn to seeing all the negative things, having to go back to the life support or yeah dialysis treatment and the moment i realized okay let's let's focusing on what i still have for example um and then i realized okay there might be people out there they can't even walk but i still have legs i can walk and um or there might be 
on other things I can still use my fingers, I can still see, and all those things. I think the the cool thing is we can compare each others with the different way we usually do, like comparing to someone that might not have it. So we usually compare each other with what other people might have that we want, but we can change it to looking at people or circumstances, situation to say, okay, they don't have it. I might not be that bad in a situation as I think. And what it does is to really create momentum and new energy in your mind to focusing more and more on the positive side of, of, of the event that happening. So for me, what you're talking about is really for all of us as individuals, we have to learn how to master ourselves. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah master our mind, uh, getting it into a training, it's like a muscle. We have to, to do it daily. Uh, we have to really, um, we have so many decisions to do uh, each day and every decision actually tells us whether we go into the left side or the right side. And uh, I think that's so important to see a set everyday training for our mindset. So as I'm thinking, I start looking at, you know, a lot of the, the stress factors that are, you know, on people every single day. And I start, for me, I, of course, because of what I do and what I believe in, it's all about, you know, you know helping, serving, supporting, uh, and developing. And, you know, and, and I, start, I start looking at being able to put in frameworks and processes and practices in order to help guide me. So I can't just, I, I can't just approach it with saying, oh, well, I'll just figure it out, right? I have to, going back to that mastering of self. So for me, there's many things that I heard uh, you saying is I have to focus in on what's more aspirational. Um, I have to focus in on gratitude. Um, I have to focus in on inspiration. And when I, if I do those things, even if I'm in a stressful, you know, conflicting scenario, whether it's with an employee or a customer, you know, it, it, it's, it comes down to both mastering myself and the situation, and then the outcome becomes quite different. Absolutely. And uh, I think it's, it's such a powerful thing to do because you have the ability to, to change it. And uh, but what I often tell myself when I'm in a difficult situation and there's a 50-50 um, situation, it usually mostly goes back to reflecting on who am I? Do I fit? Um, as a person with my strengths, passion, and values into what, what decision do I m need to make in order to get into that positive stream of, um, of the mindset. And uh, the more I know myself or the more we know ourselves, the, the easier it is to, to figure out what is the right thing to do because we go back to the core, we go back to the fundamental um, being and belief that we are, and then we can go from there to, to basically reshape the way we, where we want to go, be, do, or have. Well, gosh, as you're talking, I start thinking about, um, you know, the, the situation that we're in and uh, think about the equation of all of this, right? So I have my DNA and where I started, my wiring, I have my different starting points. I have, you know, all, all of these factors. And then I start thinking about, well, sleep, you know, that will infect it. I start thinking about nutrition, that'll affect it. I start thinking about, um, you know, every, everything associated, uh, you know, with exercise, you know, and, because, and, you know, like, for example, with this whole COVID scenario, I think I saw some researcher study report that say, said something to the effect of the entire world, um, you know, it has essentially gained 15% additional weight, you know, during this COVID time, right? So, so we're, not, we're not as mobile, you know, and so therefore we're more sedentary. Uh, and, and so I start thinking, well, that starts affecting, you know, my, my whole mindset and, you know, the victorious mindset, you know, versus, you know, a negative mindset. So when you start talking about helping people to, to get this victorious mindset and, and the formula, the equation and all the factors, 
you know, how, what, what are the pillars that you help them focus in on? Great question. Um, I say the first thing is already uh, to discovering yourself more, like to really reflecting on who am I. And uh, the beautiful thing is that we all have a great unique DNA of behaving and re- um, how do you say that? Responding to things. And uh, within that is a lot of strengths, passion and values that we have where that is in a constellation of um, nobody has that in our, in our world. Um, like the, we might have known people that have the same strengths as we have, but you know that the whole constellation is so beautiful, unique. And um, this is the first step. The second um, step that I help people easily with is to really identifying uh, well, what can I do with, with my constellational um, strength, passion, and values, which comes to the question, uh, what am I here for? Like, what, I, what am I here for to, to do with all these things? And uh, the, that, of course, this is, a, again, it's not a one event discovery thing. It's a, it's a lifelong journey. But as I said before, the more you know it, the more you, you are confident in that, the more you can, you can switch to, to, the, to a victorious living because um, it, it, it's a great um, perspective that you get. Uh, I, uh, a great situation that you can make out of it, of, of a bad situation. And uh, the third thing is what I help people at Wally to really create a dream or a vision from the who am I and the what I'm here for, two steps. Because the moment you see yourself into something bigger than you are, you get so much energy and victory already. So like it's kind of fundamental thing to, to build on it. And the beauty is that momentum comes up and uh, energy comes up and, and really having a sense of where I want to go with my life. And the fourth thing, it doesn't stay with creating a, a dream or vision. The fourth thing then is to really outlive everything um, with, with the vision and the dream and, and making daily decisions that lead me closer to the dreams or the vision with who am I, what I'm have, what am I, what am I here for, excuse me, and um, with what, where I want to go. Okay. So and as you were saying that, for me, I started thinking about, to me, what you're doing is you're helping people build momentum. So you're starting with this core foundation, and once that, you know, becomes solid and a and something that's bedrock and can be built upon, the building becomes easier and faster. Otherwise, I'm always shifting and trying to trying to control for, you know, a loose foundation. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, so I to me, when you start talking through this, I start thinking that an organization is very similar. Uh, So I was doing some research uh, talking about organizational transformations as they're currently existing today. And there's been, needless to say, because of the COVID, an acceleration of transformation occurring. And in in the perspective of people start doing what you're, kind of what you're referring to, questioning the why, right? Um, Simon Sinek, you know, is famous for the whole why thing, but... um, you know, when, when you start looking at it from an organizational perspective, I think, you know, all of us are kind of starting to ask, what is our purpose? Why are we here? Why am I working with this organization? Why do I work with these colleagues? Why do I, you know, do this particular job? I mean, all of that. So it's really quite interesting for me. It's like there's two statistics um, that are also extremely interesting with all this COVID uh, this stuff is that, you know, divorce rates are going up, you know, as well as birth rates are going up. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and so you're like, whoa, whoa, you know, how, how it's just amazing to me how people, you know, are going through this transformation right now that's been forced to some degree and accelerated 
Um, but I think it's going back to some of those foundational components that you talk about. And even organizations are doing the exact same thing. So here's what I, pro I propose or, or I project um, is that we're going to have more organizations become extinct because they're unable to do this foundational work. Um, and then you're going to have some organizations accelerate or thrive because they are. That's amazing. Yeah, I absolutely love that. And I think like the foundation is so important because um, in a world, in, a, in the information age that we live in, um, I think so many people are confused where they should start. Um, you, you can, you can uh, I don't know what the number is about the books today you could read that day uh, or they're coming out new. Um, there's so much thing, but the more you know your fundamental beliefs, strength, passion, and values and who you are, the more you can go into the direction that you really call to be. And uh, the, the, the cool thing is that once at a certain point when you are there, um, you really feel like being yourself. Um, you know what I mean? Like oftentimes I feel like, oh, we all have to, we go automatically with the crowd. Um, and then the moment we realize, well, we actually don't fit to the crowd of the hundred people, we step out. Then you have 99 people over there. You have yourself over here. And so this is where it starts. It takes a lot of courage, a lot of uh, braveness. But when you know your fundamental, uh, who, who, who you are, which, which of course never stops learning about it, but the more you know it, the more confident you get in uh, doing who you really need to be and who you really are in the inside. Well, I need this to say, talking about, you know, a word that I mentioned and what I interpreted in several of the things that you were saying was inspiration. And one of the things that we absolutely do on the show uh, to help us get some inspiration is listen to favorite quotes that others have. Is there a quote or two that you like that you'd like to share? Yeah, sure. Um, for me, it's, well, there are many, but I, I'm going to give one, which is the one from uh, Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, which says there are no limitations to the mind except the ones we acknowledge. And it has been so true over, over the lifetime that I realized, hey, actually, limitations are nothing else than the perspective we see them or the, 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 the focus we have. And I think that um, it's not, um, for me, it's not really completely relying on, uh, on my mindset alone. Um, I am a person of faith and I believe that there is a God up there who I can have an unconditional loving relationship with him and, and he knows my life and he knows everything about me. But the fact in the everyday life to make great decisions to get out of the limitation, we actually are able with the mind to uh, not acknowledging, acknowledging the, the, the limitation. And uh, so I really want to inspire you to hold on to that because there's so much more in you. There's so much more um, greatness and potential in you that everybody that is listening today. And um, because it's not there yet, it doesn't mean that it will not come in the future. It's yet uh, um, a sense of having the right focus and perspective. Or keep striving to thrive, right? Okay, so... I mean, we, we got in a little bit about, you know, some of the things that you had to go through. And, and in the show, we always talk about getting over the hump. Uh, so if you could, uh, and I'm sure there's been a lot of those humps along the way. You talked about, you know, kidney, kidney transplant failures and several other things. But if you could, tell us a story about the time where you had, had to get over the hump. Great question. Well, there are many times I think that... Uh, so there are two times. The first time is I wasn't really uh, completely aware yet. It was when I was three years old and uh, I was falling into a coma for two weeks. And um, the, reali the reality was that 
the doctors called my parents to say, hey, please come into the ICU because we have done everything that we could do and there is nothing else we can do right now. And uh, if he somehow should survive, he will never be able to walk, talk and function by himself. My parents come into the ICU um, to basically terminate my life, but uh, nothing changed. So my doctor turned off all the life support machines that I was on. And the moment they did it, um, I started to talk and said, hey, mom, I want to go into the playing room and play. And I still realize that I said that, but I don't know because the coma is a, is a weird thing. Um, I, I knew what's going on around me, but I was not there. So um, I actually knew a lot of, I got a lot of pictures in my mind that I only a few, a few years later could, uh, could put on like a puzzle where they belong, those pictures. And uh, so that was one thing I recovered. I, of course, I didn't recover like straight away from one day to another. That was one time. The other time was when I was um, about 10 years old when I lost my second kidney transplant again, um, you have to realize that after uh, at age seven, I got my second kidney transplant for two and a half years. And at that time, I actually learned a lot of things that other uh, children learn from age one, two or three years old. Uh, I learned to to feed myself. I learned to go out, try out hobbies, um, meeting up with people and friends, going to kindergarten and schools. And all of a sudden, uh, actually from one week to another, my chronic illness strike back and destroyed the kidney. And the kidney was my best friend. That's how I functioned when I was a child. And um, all of a sudden, I realized I have to go back to my old life. No more free time. Uh, I have to go to dialysis three times a week again. Uh, I had to look on the diet that I don't eat much food that I shouldn't eat. And um, I felt into a huge depression of about two weeks. I remember the time lying on the couch at my pant place, um, not eating anything for two weeks, almost not moving anything for two weeks. Um, even though my parents always tried to talk with me, I didn't want to talk. And all everything that happened in my mind was, I want to end this life. I didn't understand why this happened to me. I didn't understand uh, why it's always um, the me included in, in every bad thing. And then, so I ended, like, I literally ended my life in my mind, but I never tried to end it practically. Uh, I realized that even though in this difficult time, there were always uh, another side that said, hey, don't do it. And there was a side that said, hey, do it, do it right now. But for the sake of realizing that um, when I do it, I'm going to give other people um, way more pain. And somehow my parents realized after two weeks that they have to do something. So we had, um, I have to say that they never found out. They only found out years later that I had talks of suicide, but they realized, okay, they can't talk to their son, we have to bring some uh, uh, partial care and, and a psychologist into the home. And uh, I realized that from that time, I somehow miraculously, I got so much strength again, whether it was uh, physically, uh, mentally or spiritually. And uh, that were those two times where I really uh, struggled and had to 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 learn to take that that situation and turn it into something uh, better and greater. Yeah. 
Well, thanks for sharing that. Uh, and uh, I mean, uh, talking about the the life impacts uh, and, and the impacts you've had on others, I think that's you know a testament of you know why you you survived all of that. So, but when I think about you know what you're doing um, with works with the, the victorious um, mindset mentor, you know, right now the whole global speaking thing's kind of turned a little sideways. Um, but when I start thinking about goals, you know, some people may look at you know all of your um, situations that you've been through and the things that you've had to overcome and say, you know, Hey, you know, you're really just looking at goals from day to day. Uh, you're not talking like that. You're talking about long-term goals. So is there one goal that you can share with us? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, the biggest goal that I have is to to build 10 hospitals in slums with my soon to be NGO uh, because I love to, uh, one of my strengths is being generous, and I've been the, uh, the blessing to really grow up in a generous family. And uh, I love to to take situations in my life to turn it into something that um, helps people. And the reality why I have that goal is because I, at some point, um, that was about three, four years ago, uh, I wanted to leave a legacy that goes beyond my life. And, uh, you know, what comes to mind is first, okay, let's build a school, uh, a homeless house for, for homeless people, um, whatever. But I realized, okay, there's so many things in this world already. So why not taking my experience of having spent about almost 50% of my life in the hospital and take that and put it somewhere in this world where it's really needed. And uh, yeah, that's actually yeah, my, my biggest goal that I want to achieve. And uh, uh, it doesn't look like that at the moment, but I know that, that it's going to be happen one day if I keep it ongoing. And the Fast Little Legion wishes you the very best. Now, before we move on, let's get a quick word from our sponsor. An even better place to work is an easy to use solution that gives you a continuous diagnostic on employee engagement along with integrated activities that will improve employee engagement and leadership skills in everyone. Using this award-winning solution is guaranteed to create motivated, productive, and loyal employees who have great work relationships with their colleagues and your customers. To learn more about an even better place to work, visit beyondmorale.com forward slash better. Award-winning solution is guaranteed to create motivated, productive, and loyal employees who have great work relationships with their colleagues and your customers. To learn more about an even better place to work, visit beyondmorale.com forward slash better. All right, here we go, Fast Leader Legion. It's time for the Hump Day Hoedown. Okay, Nathaniel, the Hump Day Hoedown is a part of our show where you give us good insights fast, and I'm going to ask you several questions, and your job is to give us robust yet rapid responses that are going to help us move onward and upward faster. Nathaniel Zubrick, are you ready to hoedown? I'm fully ready. I'm always up for a challenge. All right. So what is holding you back from being an even better leader today? Oh, great. I think uh, my emotional intelligence at the moment. <laughs> um, I've realized that uh, right now I'm really working on my myself with uh, on my cognitive behavior and all that because um, when you fight about 30 one year on the road with a the chronic illness, there are a lot of things um, going on inside you that you never took time to 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 uh, confront or focus on, and uh, as well family wise, uh, past wise. So there are a lot of things that I need to to improve emotionally wise, and um, yeah, that that's my uh, current situation that I live on to be a better leader. And what is the best leadership advice you have ever received? Um, yeah, I will say, uh, don't go, you never, no one can go to the top alone. You always have to have people around you that can help you. And uh, for me, that's a really big thing, a challenge, because um, through my developing a victorious mentor, I had, I'm having a hard time to get help. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so this is something that I'm really learning as well today. So what is one of your secrets that you believe contributes to your success? Can you say it again? Sorry. 
What do you feel is one of your secrets that you believe contributes to your success? Uh, definitely going up every day and never giving up. And what do you feel is one of your best tools that helps you lead in business or life? My mindset. <laughs> and what would be one book you'd recommend to our legion? It could be from any genre. Uh, definitely Think and Grow Rich. And uh, yeah, that, that is at the moment. I got so many good books out there. <laughs> Yes. Okay, Fast Leader Legion, you can find links to that and other bonus information from today's show by going to fastleader.net forward slash Nathaniel Zubrick. Okay, Nathaniel, this is my last hump day out on question. Imagine you've been given the opportunity to go back to the age of 25 and you can take the knowledge and skills that you have now back with you, but you can't take it all. You can only take one. So what skill or piece of knowledge would you take back with you and why? Great question. Um, being... I would say it's just being myself, like in every situation and not uh, hiding something or someone that I'm not. And so I have done that a lot in my 20s. So, yeah. Nathaniel, I had fun with you today. Can you please share with the Fast Leader Legion how they can connect with you? Absolutely. So there's a business website that you can go on, which is uh, unlimited.co or my personal website that you can check out, nathanielchulbrook.com. And on both of those websites, you can check out my free ebook that you can download for free and go through the first step to unlimit your life. Nathaniel Zubrick, thank you for sharing your knowledge and wisdom. The Fast Leader Legion honors you and thanks you for helping us get over the hump. Thank you for joining me on the Fast Leader Show today. For recaps, links from every show, special offers, and access to download and subscribe, if you haven't already, head on over to fastleader.net so we can help you move onward and upward faster.